Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Thursday, July 4th, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 4 to 10. And it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Amen. What a word this morning to remind us that God is the one in control. We see here in this chapter, and when you read the old chapter, we see where God called Jeremiah. In fact, the reading said that he was called before he was even formed in his mother's belly. So God chose him. He was destined by God to be a prophet and to be a leader in Israel. And so when he came and God was having this conversation with him, God was speaking to him his will. And he was saying to God, look here, I am not qualified to be a prophet. I am but a child. I don't know what to say to these people. And you can understand why he was concerned for more reason than one. Maybe he was a shy person. We all know the reputation of Israel. And the reputation of Israel sometimes will make anybody run away. Because Israel have the reputation to be very rebellious and stubborn. And just bent in their own way. And so here Jeremiah was saying that, Lord, look here, man. I get that you call me. What, what am I to say to these people? What am I going to say? What will I say? And God said, look here. Don't tell me you can't speak. Don't tell me that you're a child. You don't worry about that. I will take care of that for you. And it's something similar he even said to Moses. If you remember the story of Moses, Moses was afraid to go in and to fear because he felt that he wasn't qualified enough to go and speak to the king. But God said, look here, I'm going to equip you. Don't worry. And so God equip those whom he called. And I say, amen. So if you are called by God, you will be equipped by God to do that which he have called you to do. And so he continued to speak to him and continue to encourage him. Because that's the God that we serve in. You know? God is not all thunder and fire and lightning. God understands how we feel and is there to give comfort and assurance. And that is why he promised him that, look here, I am going to be with you, but we will get to that. He says that, for thou shalt do what? Go to all. So in other words, wherever I send you, you will go and you will do what? You will speak the words that I command you to speak. So whatever it is that I have told you, that is what you must speak. Not your own words, not the words of someone else, but whatsoever I say. That is what you are supposed to tell the people. That is what you are supposed to, to give or to speak of. And he made one important command or statement. He said, look here, don't be afraid of their faces so God knew exactly what he was sending Jeremiah into 
and the type of people that he was sending Jeremiah to. And so God told Jeremiah, don't you worry about how they respond. You just tell them what I say and I will be with you. I will give you the strength that you need. And the reading says that God put forth his hands and touch his mouth and I say amen and what the Lord said behold I have put my word in you and I say amen and that is my desire today that God will put his words in my mouth and that I will only speak those things which he wants me to speak and that should be your prayer too so leave your own interpretation and your own wisdom out of it and depend on God to give guidance and wisdom because he says that he called him and set him what as a overseer as a like a shepherd to watch over this flock and to give guidance and to give direction and I want to take it home to us today as I said earlier God equipped those who he called and a lot of us Many of the times we shy away, myself included, because sometimes we feel that we are just not good enough. But I'm glad for the reading this morning that reminds us that, look here, it's not about you. It's never been about you. And the mere fact that I include you tell you of your value. So God value you and so he wants to make us a part of this great advance that he is doing and so he said that he will equip us he will give us what we need to do what we so if you are shy god can make you bold if you are afraid he can take away your fear if you are weak he can give you strength whatever it is that you may feel you fall short of god can fix it god can refine you and to make you ready and give you the ability to stand up like a champion for him. But along with this, when God call us and equip us and give us a message to give to the world, to give to others, we must give that message. And it's sad to say that a lot of those whom God have called, they have dropped the ball and they refuse to give the message that God give them to give to others and so you realize that even in the church today you realize that, that pastors and leaders they don't want to preach certain message they love to preach the feel-good message they love to preach messages that arouse the emotions not messages that will cause us to repent they don't want to tell people the truth because they want to remain on the good side of people. And so if we observe in our church today so many things, especially within the Adventist church, there are so many things that are now coming in that never used to exist when I was growing up as a child. These are things that I was told that they were foundational in scripture. And I myself have come to realize that it was so but now they are allowed in the church and many of the time pastors go up on the pulpit and even say it out of their mouth that we should not say anything to these folks because we ourselves we are guilty of wanting or another or we are sinners so we are not in any position to tell anybody about anything we should not tell people about they should not wear their jewelry or they should not do this or they should not do that i am like oh that's not scripture that's not what we believe and i'm referring to this from an adventist point of view because i know that there are other nominal churches or other churches who believe in these things but i am speaking in this aspect of things specifically to the adventist faith there are some things that are coming in that we do not believe and we seem to allow them because nobody wants to talk about them anymore sometimes i feel so burdened sometimes tears come to my eye because i'm like how far are we falling how far have we fallen and how far do we plan to go? And so I love this. God says, don't be afraid to speak the truth. 
If you speak the truth and somebody hates you for the truth, so be it. If you speak the truth and someone walk away from the church because you, you told them the truth, so be it. You don't go to church to, to make friends. That's not the purpose. The purpose is what? You go to church to strengthen your relationship with God and to strengthen your relationship with each other. It's all about God and worshiping God and having an experience with God. And so, yes, God is a friendly God. And naturally, if you are a friend of God, you, you become friendly. And so, not, we, we are already friends. And that is why it, is, it should be easy for me to tell you the truth because you are my friend. Now, if I tell you the truth and you hate me for it, it therefore means that we aren't friends. We aren't friends. And I tell folks that all the time. If you cannot tell me the truth, you are not my friend. You are worse than my enemy because it therefore means you see me going down a path and you refuse to give me the guidance that will help me to walk in a righteous path all because you don't want to offend me. And I'm not saying that you should just go around trying to offend others and to tear in others down and let others feel like they are the worst sinners or the worst person on the planet. That's not the purpose of the gospel. The purpose of the gospel is to point sinners to Christ. And how is it that you are going to know what God requires of you if you and I don't know what he's, he's saying? If we are not being told the truth, if we are not learning what is truth, if we are not walking in the truth. You see where I'm going? So this is not about any kind of personal attack on anyone. It's about speaking the truth, speaking the truth in love and telling others what God told you to tell them. And you do it in a kind way. Because remember, you are also in need of God's grace. You are not perfect. You are a sinner. You are a sinner just the same. Do you get what I'm saying? So, but I realize that there's a trend coming up in the church. The moment that you talk about truth or the moment that you tell someone that they are doing something wrong, the first thing that comes out of the mouth, you are judging them. You are doing this. You are doing never something positive. And that's got to be the spirit of deception and the spirit of the enemy. And I'm not saying that there are those of us sometimes who can be very unkind when we seem to be giving information to people. We make them feel like they are worse than nothing. But if you are guided by the spirit, then you will know how to give the message to others. And that is why it says here, God will tell us what he wants us to say. So your emotion will be left out of it. Your thoughts will be left out of it. And only what God instructs you to speak or I to speak, we will say. And it will be done there. Then God will take it from there. And so my encouragement to us, all of us this morning, is to remember that when God calls us to his purpose and his will, he will equip us to do the things that he need us to do. Don't worry about who you are as a person. Just make yourself available and God will give you what you need to do his work. May God continue to bless us and may God continue to keep us as we seek to walk in his faithfulness, in his righteousness until he comes. Amen.